Okay, in this video, this is section 2.1, uh, examples part two. So we're gonna continue with another example. This one says, find the derivative of the function by the limit process. Now this is important because later, we will find a shortcut from getting the derivative of this function um, to the very end of the actual answer of the derivative. And it'll be a real quick shortcut. It literally takes seconds to do. However, while we're figuring out what a derivative is, we have to use the limit process. So be careful when you go to take the test for this section, because if it says find the derivative and that's it, you're allowed to use the shortcut. But if the problem says find the derivative by the limit process, then you have no choice but to do it the long way, which we're gonna do here. So by the definition of a derivative, um, we're going to need to take this limit. Now notice when they do the derivative, they use x and not c. Whereas when they find um, this tangent line at a point, they do put a c in there. So it's a little bit different, okay? You use c when you're finding the slope at a point. You use x when you're just trying to find the derivative. So then now, let's see. Since our function is x cubed plus two, um, we're gonna go ahead, or 2x, I'm sorry, we're gonna go ahead and plug in this for all the x's and then we're gonna plug in this for all the x's. Well, it wouldn't be nothing to plug in, it would be the exact same function. But let's start off with the beginning. So we have x plus delta x cubed plus two times x plus delta x. That is all for this first function. Minus f of x itself. This is f of x. So x cubed plus two x all over delta x. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Pascal's triangle um, or the binomial theorem, like how to expand these things, but whichever one you're using or if you're just expanding it all by hand, um, taking two of these and multiplying them together and then taking the result and multiplying by another one, um, you should still get the same thing. So Pascal's triangle says that these will be my coefficients um, if I expand this out. So you have one and then x cubed plus three x squared delta x plus three x delta x squared plus one delta x cubed. So when you're using the Pascal's triangle, this first term will start with the cube because I'm cubing it and then decrease in its power. So it went from third power to second power to first power to no, no x's at all. And then the last guy will have none at the first term and then increase in power. So now I have one delta x, then I have a square delta x until finally I have a cube delta x. Now I am running out of room here, but I do need to distribute this positive two here. So two x plus two delta x. And then I'm going to also distribute this minus to these two terms. So minus x cubed and minus 2x all over a delta x. So eventually I do need to reduce this delta x, but let's simplify what we have so far. So I think some stuff may cancel. Yes, an x cubed minus x cubed cancels. Um, a 2x minus a 2x will cancel. And I don't think any of these are like terms. So we end up with 3x squared delta x plus 3x delta x squared plus delta x cubed and then finally plus 2 delta x. Now you cannot put it in parentheses or you can, it's up to you. It's only when it has a power that you, you need the parentheses there. So now I'm gonna do the same trick as I did before. <clears throat> All of these have a delta x factor, so I'm gonna factor that delta x out. When I do that, this will just become three squared. This will have one of them that have come out, so it'll be three x times only one delta x. This will have a factor that has come out, 
so it would be delta x squared and then this delta x factor would have come out just leaving me with a 2. And then the delta x I factored out from all of these terms will reduce with the delta x in the denominator, which should leave me with an expression that I can use direct substitution. So then now when I substitute, I have 3x squared plus 3x times 0 plus 0 squared plus 2. And if I simplify that, this term will go to 0, this term will go to 0. So I end up with 3x squared plus 2. And so f prime of x equals 3x squared plus 2. Now again, if the problem says find the derivative by the limit process, you have to show your work and you have to do the limit. If it just says find the derivative, then you'll be allowed to use the shortcuts that we'll figure out later on in a later section. I just want you to be aware of that in case you try to do this on the test. Um, again, uh, some of my complaints in the past have been that because the student didn't do it m the way I wanted them to do it, they got it wrong. Well, that wasn't necessarily the case. The case is, is that if it specifically says by the limit process, and all you do is jump to the answer, then you have not followed the directions for the problem. Therefore, a student that does that would not receive full credit as a student who did follow the directions of the problem and complete the problem correctly. Okay, so I just wanna bring that to your attention now, but it will probably be brought up again um, later when we get closer to the review and then the test.